Welcome back guys. Today we're going to be going over something that I think is confusing for a lot of people out there and that is Roth accounts. Whether it be a Roth 401k or a Roth IRA and I know they have their nuances between them. Each one is slightly different but the idea behind a Roth is fairly simple. You put money in tax-free. It grows tax-free and you pull it out tax-free. That's kind of it. There's a lot more to it, but I want to go over why this is so important and why a lot of financial advisors talk about it as being a great item. So I've got my notes in front of me today because we're going to be going through quite a few numbers, but they will be fairly easy and I'm kind of using a similar amount of money for all of these in order to simplify so you can do some comparisons here. Okay, so an IRA right now has somewhere around a $6,000 max contribution. So let's go with that. It varies year to year. If you're watching this a few years in the future, that may have gone up. $6,000 a year. If you contribute to an IRA or a Roth IRA, an IRA is the pre-tax, a Roth IRA is the after-tax contribution thing. If you contribute $6,000 pre-tax, that would be the equivalent of contributing $4,800 post-tax, okay? So if you instead contributed $6,000 post-tax, Roth, that would be the equivalent of $7,500 pre-tax. So what that means is by putting in after-tax money into a Roth account, you're effectively able to put in more money so if you maxed out with $6,000 of a Roth, it would be the equivalent of putting in $7,500 of a regular IRA. So you're able to squeeze more money into it because what you're squeezing in is after-tax money, which means that tax is not going in with it. Now let's take a specific example, okay? I have one right here. Let's say you make $100,000 in a year and you put $6,000 of that into the two accounts. Let's, let's just compare if you did one versus the other. If you put it into the pre-tax traditional IRA account, it would reduce your taxable income down to $94,000. I'm gonna keep this 20% tax bracket because it's just gonna be easy to use that across all of these examples. So $100,000, 6,000 goes into your IRA, 94,000 is taxable, assuming a 20% tax rate, you end up with $75,200 take home, okay? If you did that same thing, but you put $6,000 into a Roth, your take home, theoretically here, is $100,000. You take 20% out of that for tax, which leaves you with $80,000. You then take your 6,000 of after-tax contributions out of that and you end up with $74,000. The difference there between the $75,200 and the $74,000 is $1,200 less in your take-home pay. But in your terms of your contributions, you are effectively saving $1,500 more. And that is because of the $6,000 Roth equaling $7,500 pre-tax. So I know this is a little bit confusing, but the idea here is if you're putting money in that has fees on it you have to pay, the fees are going in with it. But if you put the money in after you've already paid the fees, then you're putting in more money, more of your money that you get to keep. All right, moving on. Let's say you do this same thing, but with a 401k and a Roth 401k. So for 2022, the maximum is gonna be $21,000. So we'll use that number here. If you made $100,000 and you put 21 of it into a pre-tax account, that would bring your taxable income down to $79,000. You then pay the same 20% tax on it, you would end up with $63,200 that you take home with $21,000 that has not yet been taxed sitting in your 401k. If you then did a Roth 401k instead, Start with $100,000, pay your 20% tax, that gives you $80,000. Of that $80,000, you then take your $21,000 that's all Roth, and you take home $59,000. That's how much you actually get in your paycheck. $59,000 home, but now you have $21,000 that tax has already been paid on in your Roth. You will never pay tax on that money again. 
The difference here is the $21,000 that you put into your Roth is the equivalent of $26,250 if it was all pre-tax money. So you've squeezed in an extra $5,250 into that Roth account. Because you ended up bringing home $59,000 instead of $63,200, this has actually cost you in that year $4,200. So you're bringing home $4,200 less that year, but you've effectively contributed $5,250 more into your retirement account. So very interesting. It's a method of using taxes in order to put more money away for retirement. All right, now let's look at, assuming you've done this over your career, what does this mean at the other end of the line? You're retired and you're pulling your money out. I'm gonna use the same simple math here. If you had two and a half million dollars and you were able to pull 4% of pre-tax money, you would bring home $100,000. With that, if you had to pay a 20% tax, you would actually be bringing home $80,000. Now, if you took the same two and a half million, but it was all Roth, you pay no tax. You take 4%, you bring home $100,000. So now, two and a half million dollars in retirement means two very different things, depending upon whether you have paid tax on that or not, or whether it is taxable income. Now, there are some nuances that we'll get into here in a minute that muddy the waters a bit and make this a little more interesting and a little more complicated. But at least understanding how your money goes in, how you can squeeze more into a Roth than you can a regular account, and how those translate into the money that you take at the other end of the line are important items to understand. More complicated scenario here. This does not have to be one or the other you can mix and match those two. And you can say, hey, I'll put half my money into a Roth and half into a regular because I don't know whether taxes will be higher now or later. I'm gonna go ahead and kind of hedge my bets, do both and see which one works out. But you get some special advantages from doing that. Now let's say half of your money is in Roth. We're dealing with the same two and a half million. You've got the 50-50 split. So that means if half your money from two and a half million is in Roth, you would bring home $50,000 of already taxed, you don't have to worry about tax money. The other half would be $50,000 of pre-tax money. You do have to worry about tax. Here's where this gets interesting. If you're doing your taxes, if the money was in a Roth account and we're not talking about a stock market account, we're not talking about capital gains, we're purely talking about income tax brackets, you get a standard deduction every year. So if you're married and you have $50,000 that are taxable, $25,900 in 2021 come out of that as a standard deduction. So you automatically do not pay taxes on $25,900 of that 50. That leaves $24,100 as taxable income. So remember, we started with two and a half million. We pulled out 4%, which is 100,000. Half of that 50,000 was not taxable. Half of that 50,000 was taxable. Part of that gets excluded because of the standard deduction, leaving you with only $24,100 of $100,000 that you have to worry about taxes on. Well, since it's such a low amount of money, you're not in the 20% tax bracket. So in the, let's see there, you would be in the 10 and 12% tax brackets. So the 10% tax bracket goes up to income of $20,550. The rest of that money, the 24,100 minus the 20,550 for the 10% tax bracket is only $3,550 that gets taxed at 12%. And I won't go into the tiered tax brackets. I just want to give you an idea of how this works. So effectively, in the end, you end up paying $2,481 worth of taxes on the $24,100. So by splitting your money half in Roth, half in regular, taking 4%, you end up getting 
$97,519 in your pocket and you pay $2,481 in taxes. That's pretty amazing. Doing this, you get to take advantage of the standard deduction. You also have reduced your taxable income, which can do several other things for you. It might allow you to qualify for certain other subsidies. For example, Obamacare. If you make under a certain amount of money, they will give you a subsidy on your health insurance. So by doing this method, you have made your taxable income look very, very low and therefore have probably qualified for a subsidy. So now you're kind of collecting all of these different benefits together in order to live on a whole lot less money or at least get a lot more benefits out of the money that you have. These are just a few examples here of the difference between how Roth and regular work how you might be able to split those two in order to get additional benefits, as well as a few other examples of things like Obamacare that you might be able to take advantage of. Or if you're not using these accounts, I would highly suggest looking at capital gains and what those brackets are like. But I hope this has helped you to understand at least the difference between Roth and regular. The idea that the same amount of money in the end Two and a half million taxable versus non-taxable means two very different things for how much money you get to bring home. And when you're contributing, the amount you're able to put in pre-tax or post-tax is very different. So $6,000 in a Roth is more money than $6,000 in a pre-tax account. That is the big takeaway I would like you to get from this video. If nothing else, get the fact that putting money into a Roth, you can effectively squeeze more money into it because it's after tax. And I think that is one of the things that most people don't understand about Roths. Now, beyond that, I will give you a few other items to go and research yourself. Roths and traditionals have different rules about when you need to take the money required minimum distributions. Uh, Roth, one of the things they've talked about recently because people were taking advantage of Roth accounts is maybe limiting it so that you can have no more than possibly $10 million in a Roth account and then it becomes taxable again. There are so many other nuances to this, but understanding the basics is important. If you have any questions, leave a comment below and I will answer that as quickly as I can. If not, if you like this video, please click on the like button or click on subscribe to get notified when I post more videos. That's all I have for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.